Thank you everyone for joining. Uh, my name is Kevin Jones, developer relationship nice engineer at Edge and Node. Uh, today I'm covering for Marcus. Uh, you could make it, um, but I'm really excited today because we're going to be having Fuse come on. Uh, Emmanuel from Fuse uh, is going to be talking about the Fuse uh, uh, platform, some of the stuff that you can do, uh, some of the integrations with the graph uh, that are there, and really just, uh, yeah, just here to answer questions for you guys about Fuse and the graph integration and uh, yeah, I'm really excited because uh, I've, I've kind of messed around with these a little bit myself, and I think it's a really cool, uh, cool uh, chain. So let's get started. Uh, Emmanuel, I'll let you take it over from here. Uh, you can go ahead and introduce yourself, and uh, yeah, take it over. Thank you so much for that introduction, Kevin. It's really a delight to be here speaking with everyone. Um, my name is Emmanuel. I'm a developer support engineer here at Fuse. Fuse is an L1 chain, although currently we are in the process of moving to become an L2 layer, um, just so that we are able to optimize our services to developers that's built on top of Fuse. So this session, I am going to be talking to you guys about um, our current upgrade of our subgraphs on the graph network, uh, moving to the decentralized infrastructure and how we have been able to pull that off and also the number of subgraphs available on us right now that you can use and for the developers in here i am very much interested in talking to you about how you can also build on fuse and how easy it is to query your applications on fuse because of the very fact that we provide as the case for developers to build on top of our chain. So aside just deploying smart contracts, we make two SDKs available both for web and also for, for mobile, that is um, test script and also for that as well. And then we also have a sort of APIs. That way, all your read information that you, are, you would want to extract um, on chain from your smart contracts across all your events, once you deploy a subgraph using your contracts, you would be able to read those as well. So quickly, I am just going to um, go through my slides here. Um, Kevin, confirm for me that you can still see my deck. Yeah, working great. Awesome, great. So um, exploring Fuse using the graph. But first, we are going to be talking about um, Fuse, what Fuse is about, uh, also how to query Fuse using the graph, and then a couple of just few examples on Fuse subgraphs. I want to make this as brief and straightforward to the point as possible so that it is worth your time and you find value from this session. So jumping straight into it, right? Like I said um, earlier, we are actually an L1 right now, basically um, EVM compatible, and we like to describe ourselves as the Vev block the, as the Vev platform for blockchains. So what that means is that we are optimized to serving businesses and also optimized to serving developers who want to build businesses on chain. So out of the box, we support account abstraction, right? And that is very, very critical because right now we are on a mission to enable developers and teams to onboard as many people from the native Web2 ecosystem into Web3. And the one way that that can be made possible is by making the experience as seamless as it can be, right? We don't want people to um, memorize mnemonic and pass keys and phrases and have to worry about you know, keeping all of their private information and you know how to store their keys, but instead, with very simple process of signing on using email authentication or any other form of authentication that is available in the Web2 ecosystem, we support that out of the box. And currently, we have a couple of partners in the ecosystem that make this easy for developers that are building on Fuse, right? Um, Pimlico, web 3 yards, just to mention a few. And then um, I did mention that we have an API, right? So our API basically makes it possible for developers who do not want to program in native Web3 
three programming languages, right? You do not want to write um, Solidity. You basically just you know want to understand how you can carry out read, write operations on chain. We provide APIs for basically everything that you would need to do to build a DAP. For instance, um, you want to authenticate your users. We have an API for that where you can create smart contract accounts for your users, right? And then, like I did mention, having account abstraction out of the box makes this very, very possible, right? So you want to make sure that your developers are able to carry out some um, transfer operations and able to carry out basic read operations, like read um, their balance and all of that. We have an API for all of that. And again, if you want to like carry out um, basic analytics on chain, say you want to understand how many um, users have collected your NFTs that you've deployed and all of those information, right? And then you do not, um, you just want to make use of an, a simple API for that. We have an API for that as well. And um, it will do work for anyone who wants to learn more about these things to visit our documentation, right? Um, docs.fuse.io. And I would particularly recommend that immediately after going through the Getting Started Guide, you go over to our tutorial session, right? We have well over um, close to 20 tutorials right now that would like guide you through every single thing that you want to like build on chain with you know, example use cases as well. So moving on, I am going to be walking you across a couple of the print functions that you would find when you would use our, our APIs, right? Um, like I did mention, you want to carry out analytics, uh, possibly get um, token details, token price, token change in a setting, you know, interval, whether it's in a day, a 24 hour period, a week, seven days, or even way longer than that. And also you can custom your queries, right? You want to get um, balance information and all of that. So there are more read functions, but just to highlight a few, that is why I listed this here. And again, very important critical write functions, right? That you wouldn't want developers to go through the hassle of interacting with your smart contracts directly, or you just want to like make use of the API to build out these functions. So create smart contract accounts, carry out um, sending of native and ERC to 20 tokens, right? And also all of this experience can be a gaslex experience because it's enabled by a kind of abstraction and also carrying, carrying out batch transactions, right? And, you know, just making it easier for your users to be able to use your DAP by batching, say maybe state operations where you carry out approve and transfer in the same transaction as the same user operation as against, you know, breaking it into separate transactions. And again, uh, swapping tokens, you know, all of that writes functions that you can carry out. So recently we have upgraded all our subgraphs that we have on the graph to the decentralized network infrastructure, right? Developers can now take advantage of um, the features of decentralized querying of fuse graphs. So I'm just going to quickly walk you through an example. After walking through, through the example, then I'm going to take you over to our docs. So I already have these um, examples opened on a separate tab on here. I am just going to switch to that screen and share that screen. So basically, this subgraph, it's now live on the centralized hosted service, right? And we just recently upgraded it. So that means every query that you would be making here have already been um, verified by network and validated. So this is an example query of what results that you can obtain. And then with every other query that you want to like call, whether you want to see um, ERC 20 transfers across the smart contracts accounts that have been deployed on the network and every other single query on here that you, you want to make whether you want to see the number of user operations the payment master information all of this is live and available for developers to come play with and make use of 
So just um, because I want to keep this very, very short and go straight to the point, I am going to be sharing the links after this call. And also, I did mention that I was going to take you to our documentation. And then show to you where you can find every other resources regarding the subgraphs that have been deployed and how you can go play with them and use them for your projects. So again, the documentation is at docs.fuse.io, right? Um, we have tutorials that you'd want to like interact with all of them with example use cases and practically every information that you will need to make sure that you get up to speed at building and getting quickly running on Fuse. So I am going to end this session here because like I did promise at the beginning, I want to make it brief, short, very straight point. So um, at this time, I would welcome any questions if there are any or um, giving it back over to you, Kevin. Awesome. Thank you for that. That was a great uh, presentation. Um, so I guess um, I can open up with a question. Um, so we wait and see if some come in the chat. But um, yeah, what's the, I, I know you guys have like the native account abstraction in the chain, which is really awesome. I think that's really, really cool. Um, what other benefits do you see um, of developers using uh, Fuse and like why they should choose it as the, you know, a chain to build on? Is there any like thoughts you have there? That's that's a very fascinating question, right? And I would have I would answer that by saying that I want I don't I do not want to make this some sort of a chain wars conversation by trying to <laughs> convince anyone to come build on us against others, right? So, but I mean, I did mention EVM compatible. That means um, there are many options that you can choose. But one of the critical things I will I will point out with building with us is that we ensure that we it's i wouldn't describe it as a hand holding experience but we are there every step of the way for our partner right like take for instance um, we recently announced an ecosystem fund for projects that deploy on us right what that means is that aside from giving them finances to like build on us we also make sure that we provide support across their marketing initiatives and if they have um problems with you know implementing things on the technical side we are also able to provide them direct support and because we are a very small nimble and fast team we have that you know presence that developers need to be able to make sure that they have all their questions answered every step of the way so our response time it's very very high and then there's still, you know, a lot of work to be done in that regard. But the promise here being that when you choose to build with us, we are with you every step of the way. Yeah. Awesome. That's really cool. Uh, so there's a question uh, here from, from Lewis from Finax. Um, so it looks to me like, uh, what's your point of view on uh, RAAS, Ross, being an L2? I don't know if you have any input there. Um, I do not roll get service. Yeah. Oh, okay. Rollups as a service. That's that's a. I think that's that's a question that's standing here on my feet right now. I do not have an answer that I would say would come off my tongue easily. Right. It would be something that I would have to like give some thoughts to and then have a proper conversation but for us we are exploring moving on to polygon cdk and then they use um zero knowledge Z Z zk tech right and um i i think it would be someone from the network team that would really have that much in-depth understanding um, to really answer that question, if we are exploring using the roller parts or not. So, yeah, I'll just leave it at that. And if you don't mind, if it's a conversation that you want to continue, I don't know who asked that question, you can always, you know, 
pop into our Discord and drop it. And of course, I'll tag the right person to respond to it. Yeah, so if you click the little chat icon up in the top right hand corner, you should be able to see yes. the, the thread there. And then that was uh, Lewis from Phoenix. So you can uh, also write the message in. Awesome. Uh, any other questions for Emmanuel? Steve. Oh, Luis, these are very, very fascinating questions. Yes, and I'm going to quickly drop the link to the Discord in the chat here. So, yeah, as I said, currently we are still on L1, but conversations are ongoing to use Polygon CDK to deploy to BIN and L2 using um, ZK type. And then, uh, oh, okay. No, we are still on N1, Luis. Cool. Thanks for linking that. Yeah, so anyone's interested in joining there. Um, I also saw that you guys have like some um, uh, kind of like airdrop things that you can do to like qualify for the airdrop. Mm -hmm. And this seems quite interesting. Uh, if anyone else wants to get involved in the protocol, just toy around with it. It's probably a good option. And uh, there's some like quests on layer three, I think, as well. So a lot of ways to get involved. So really cool. Thank you so much, Emmanuel. Appreciate your time, um, taking the time out of your day. So thank you so much. And uh, yeah, feel free to hang out if you'd like. Um, I think what we usually do is just kind of use the rest of this time um, to just kind of be around and answer any questions anyone has about the graph. Um, and then also just briefly talk a little bit about what's coming up. Um, I think for like in-person events, just probably worth mentioning that we will have a pretty strong presence at ETHCC. Uh, and at ETH Global Brussels. And so if anyone is looking to join that, uh, we'll be around. There's going to be some events. Um, keep an eye on the uh, the Twitter, Graph Global Twitter. We'll be linking some events that are going to be happening, some educational stuff. And uh, yeah, we'll be uh, sponsoring the hackathon as well. So if there's any hackers out here uh, that want to come to Brussels, it'll be a lot of fun. And yeah, thank you so much, everyone, for your time today. Uh, it's a little bit of a short session, but... Um, We'll keep the Discord open here for a little longer so that you can ask any questions that you have. Or if anything comes up, uh, feel free to just uh, use this time to chit-chat and network. So thank you guys and look forward to seeing you guys next week.